Hey guys, welcome back to another video. Ryan Styles Harris here. And in this video today, like the title says, we're jumping into my first nitro car. Um, I kind of have basically no idea what I'm doing. Kind of just copying what I can see is what I'm supposed to do. Getting another associated car like all my other ones back there. In today's video, I'm going to talk about what I have so far. And I am kind of expecting a phone call from somebody very important because I got a couple questions for him and he has my motor. So um, hang on. I'm going to try and get him on the call real quick. Boom. Here we go. Guys, the one and only, the master of Nitro, Mr. Adam Drake. Please introduce yourself, Adam, as if you don't need an intro already. <laughs> What's happening? Just uh, Adam Drake here, uh, just hanging out, trying to help a fellow racer with uh, a few Nitro questions. Oh, geez. I definitely need all the help in the world that I can possibly get. <laughs> um, definitely really excited to get into this Nitro stuff. And you definitely have the reputation as like the OG master of the Nitro world. And for a lot of people out there, you have a promo that you put out recently kind of explaining a uh, engine service that you have that a lot of people are really excited about, myself included, because I sent you a motor. Um, is there anything you want to tell the people about your engine service there? Yeah, so I've definitely, I've sure. and uh, recently, yeah, I started doing a engine break-in service. It's, it's the same service or, um, I guess, the way that I break in my own engines. Okay. And just kind of sharing that with the rest of the world, just trying to not only help people have a better performing engine, but also just an easier, more user-friendly nitro experience. Because, I mean, let's face it, breaking in your nitro engine is, is not a lot of fun. So Sure. That's awesome. Um, I personally sent over my OSB 2102 to Adam uh, yeah. not too long ago. Um, Adam, I'm just curious. Is there any chance that I'm going to see that motor back any time, any day soon? Yeah, we actually have the engine right here, what? so I'm going to get it uh, on the way to you, and uh, you can get it in your car and start enjoying it. What? Dude, thanks. Awesome. The internet is magical. All jokes aside, uh, Adam, is there anything that you could give someone like myself that... Yes, I have a lot of knowledge racing 10 scale, um, so I don't need the super basics, but are there things about Nitro that are very specific that I might not know about that you could also share with a lot of the other uh, viewers here on the channel? Yeah, the big thing is just keeping things simple. You know, you don't have to kind of necessarily get crazy and have your engines modified or the latest and greatest crazy clutch. Like most of the manufacturers make really good clutch systems that work well. You can go to the different manufacturers' website and get set up sheets from, you know, different drivers, whether it's an associated low C Mugen, Kyosho driver. Um, but the big thing is just keeping it simple, not overthinking it. And um, again, with some of the videos that I've put out, like as far as engine tuning and stuff like that, you can go back and you can look at like uh, base carb settings. So if you ever get lost or your engine kind of changes tune or gets kind of out of whack. Sometimes it can be because the filter gets dirty or maybe you get a hole in your one of your fuel lines or pressure lines mm. and maybe your tune gets, you know, just way out of whack and you're lost. Uh, you can go back to those videos or to just the, the manual or the instructions that come with your engine. Get those base settings and then kind of creep back up on the tune. With my break-in service, it makes it pretty easy because for most engines, or at least any OS-based or Novorossi-based engine, the carburetors come set to kind of my recommendation. So oh, wow. you're, you're really close. You're not trying to determine like, man, is it the top that's too rich or the bottom that's too rich? Hmm. You have a pretty good baseline. And again, that can vary depending on your fuel or where you live, how humid it is, things like that. But sure. for the most part, it's, it's a very general basic setting that will get you fired up and have pretty good performance, uh, you know, for all, all types of conditions. That's awesome. I, I appreciate you. It's kind of one of those things that I definitely would expect you to uh, condition the, the piston and the sleeve and the motor itself. But I honestly didn't even think that you would touch the carb at all because it's not, you know, you're not going to go out and run it. So you really 
it's like it's almost like just like a nice thing that you do as an added bonus in my opinion so i appreciate yeah. you dialing in those baselines yeah i do little things like i'll i'll put a zip tie on the car boot just to help seal the boot um just that's one of the things that i do on my engine um i kind of tighten um the the ball end on the carburetor just to make sure it doesn't kind of pull off all those things will kind of to have to be tweaked or adjusted depending on the vehicle that it's going in sure um originally my plan was to also seal the carburetors but again because of the different vehicles and orientation of the linkage hmm. i don't want to seal the carburetor then you have to break the seal to get it to fit properly in your car so um i just put the zip tie on the car boot just to help seal that and then i set the idle high speed low speed and mid speed needles um Again, just to, to make it to where you have a, a little bit more enjoyable and easier experience for Nitro. Awesome. Well, Adam, I greatly appreciate you uh, giving my motor the work over here. I'm really looking forward to running that thing. I'm sure it's going to be a rocket ship. Um, thank you so much. Thank you. I appreciate it. This video has been hopefully kind of fun so far. Uh, super big shout out thank you to Adam Drake. His break-in service made that little break-in practice session more of like a usable practice session than it was more focused on breaking in an engine. I don't have a whole lot of experience with nitro vehicles. I dabbled a little bit long time ago with my HPI Savage SS before the Truggy class existed. Anyways, that's all the experience I have. And back then my dad was wrenching on my truck, so I didn't really do or know anything. So that break-in service, I've linked all that info down below. I highly, highly, highly recommend anyone that's getting into it, or even if you're a veteran, just the amount of time and money you save doing that, it 
literally pays for itself and you get to enjoy the RC hobby more. I know this sounds like a super mega plug, like paid endorsement, but it's not. It's just me thoroughly being pleased with the product that Adam Drake has there with his break-in service. So jumping into my RC8 B3.1, I don't really know the all the cool must-haves for the vehicle. I've kind of played copycat with what I've seen a lot of the fast guys run and I've asked a lot of questions and I've pieced together what I think is a pretty good starting point for my first team associated nitro buggy. Starting with the heart of the vehicle, you can see that it is powered by an OS branded engine. We have the B2102. It's got the cool low profile cooling head on it and it has a lot of other cool things that I'm sure I could tell you about if I knew more, but I honestly don't. However, I do know from back in the little bit that I ran Nitro in the day, that OS engines are just phenomenal. They always have been. Easy to tune, and they just perform very well for a long period of time with the proper care. Everyone has said the same thing about this particular engine, so I'm hoping to continue to appreciate and enjoy the same OS reputation that I have a little bit of personal experience with. This OS engine is going to be operated by my one of my newest sponsors, BK Servos. All of the links and the specifics are going to be right down in the description below. So if you're curious which ones they are or where to grab some for yourself, you can go ahead and find them there. I wasn't exactly sure. I put the whole kit together and I got most of the components there. And then I kind of scratched my head and thought, how do you turn this thing on? Back when I was in Nitro before, I had a very, you know, large, uh, mechanical switch just on off. I can see in certain crash scenarios where they're going fast or they land a certain way that you might actually somehow move the switch and kill the car. So I see a lot of guys they just do like a plug they literally just plug it in and then it's just on and then they unplug it and then it's off. Me being a diehard 110 scale racer I just it just didn't feel right I had to have an on off switch so one of the switches that I saw, I saw it on Spencer Rivkin's car. He has the ProTech electronic switch. So I went ahead and snagged that. It just mounts right up there on the transponder mount. And then you just move your transponder from the top side of that to the bottom. And then you have that nice and tidy little setup there and a nice proper on off switch. Uh, let's see, what else do we have? We obviously have the Kashima shock bodies. It's one thing that I know it's 99% cosmetic appearance, but there's something to be said for that. One of the closest style of racing that we take some of the cues from when it comes to the aesthetics or colorations of our vehicles would be like the motocross and supercross bikes. And all the factory guys, they have that really iconic like goldish color front forks. The, a lot of them are the Fox, or there's a couple other brands out there that have this particular color. So I think it's cool that we can have the same thing on our little 110 scale and 18 scale vehicles as well. Now, as far as the setup goes on this vehicle, right out of the gate at the time of this video, Spencer Rifkin had just released his kind of starting point setup for this car when he was doing some testing at the Nitro compound. It's kind of like a looser outdoor condition track, which is what I will run most of the time with this particular vehicle. So I figured I'd try it out myself. I actually had the liberty of having a quick conversation with Spencer about this setup to try and see like what he was trying to accomplish and why he had it set a certain way. I don't really have a starting point of my own or something to compare it to so I can just kind of visualize, oh, that's why you have this and you're doing this versus this, so maybe you're trying to accomplish this. Usually I can see those things when I'm looking at a setup sheet for those vehicles because I'm very familiar with them. So it was nice to ask him a couple questions about this particular setup so I could understand the ins and outs of it, if you will. One of the things that he pointed out was he wanted me to notice that the front upper control arm was a little bit longer than what you might see on most setups. Yes, this car has a pivot ball style front hubs with the two 
arms, but basically the top arm, it is essentially a turnbuckle in the sense that that's how you control some of the camber on the front end of your vehicle. You can put shims on the bottom or the top, but most of it is done through the top control arm. On this particular setup, he has it in a little bit longer position. He said that he was doing this because he was trying to calm down the front end of the vehicle. Those narrower ones make it a little bit more of an edgy or aggressive style steering. So if that's what you're looking for, maybe you could do the opposite of what this setup calls for. However, I think that this is a good balanced starting point because Spencer took a lot of time to dial this setup in and share it with everyone. Other thing to note, you are gonna see that this setup has some Mugen branded springs, front and rear. As of right now, what Spencer was saying is that there's seems to be a little bit of a gap between spring rates that the Mugen springs seem to fill nicely as of right now. They guys are gonna do some more testing and see if they can figure out what spring combinations they like of their own. But for now, they feel like this is a very solid spring setup and all of this information is linked in the setup sheet down below. So if you're looking for any more of the particulars, ride height, pill inserts, etc., etc., if I don't mention them here, have no fear, you can open up that link down below and you'll see everything you need to know if you want to dial this setup into your vehicle. Like I was saying before, didn't really know what to reach out to and start with, with a lot of things. Um, one of the things that I kind of asked around, did a lot of searching with was what type of fuel is everybody running these days? You always hear a lot of mixed things and extreme horror stories of this guy ran this and this happened and blah, 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 blah. But I seem to consistently hear a lot of good things about the VP fuels. They do make racing fuels for a lot of other racing categories, so it's safe to say that they know what they're doing when it comes to creating a quality fuel. Adam Drake also endorsed the VP, the VP fuels, particularly the Tessman blend. He says that he's been really satisfied with the oil package in that particular blend, and he runs it in a lot of his vehicles. So of course, I've grabbed the 25% to start, and then I also have the 30% Tessman blend to run on race day if I feel like trying to go super fast. Probably end up just getting myself into more trouble with all the extra power, but of course, we'll just have to wait and see what happens. So I think the buggy looks really cool. It was really exciting to put this together. It's the first one that I've ever built. So we'll just have to wait and see where it goes from here. As it progresses and I try things that I like or learn new things, I'll try and share them here on the channel with you guys so you can stay up to speed and keep tweaking your personal vehicles to go faster or feel better. Thank you guys so much for watching. Really appreciate it. If you have any other questions or comments about the items that I've used or things that I've learned so far, or if you've spotted something that I have obviously messed up, please drop any and all of those comments down below. I'll do my best to keep up with you guys. Um, if you're not following me on Instagram or Facebook, feel free to follow me there. Somewhere down in the description below, I've put my social media handles, hashtags, and all that good stuff. Anyways, thanks again for watching, guys. Like, comment, subscribe, you know how that goes, and I will see you in the next one.